Hello class and welcome to Industrial Robotics 2 and uh, thanks for signing up for the class. I'm going to do online lectures every week so that way we don't use the class time f for me uh, lecturing because when you all arrive and leave at different times for the lab that means I'm going to have to go over the same thing with each person as they arrive so uh, hopefully this will kind of uh, speed things up and help you keep track of all your online work uh, without me having to use a lot of class time to do that because mostly our class time is reserved for working on the robots and uh, that was why you signed up for the class in the first place was to learn how to program those robots so my goal is to give you as much time doing that as possible. So the first thing on the agenda is we have to look at the syllabus. Okay, so the syllabus. Uh, there's my contact information. And uh, you can call me or text me on my cell phone. Uh, or send me an email to mriley18 at ivytech.edu. And I don't have an office there, so you just have to meet me in the uh, lab room, AMCE 164, if you need any additional assistance beyond, beyond our normal lab time. And I usually get over there about 3, but sometimes I might be a little later, so I put my office hours as 3.30 to 4. Of course, that's flexible as needed. And if uh, somebody happens to get behind on labs or whatever, uh, we can arrange some other times for you to come in and catch up if you need some extra time doing that. Uh, here's all the help desk stuff. If you're having trouble uh, accessing your uh, online curriculum here on the Canvas uh, app, which I really don't like. But uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there. So uh, don't contact me if you're having trouble with that because I really can't help you much with it. Contact the help desk. Uh, disability support uh, if you have anything that you need my supervisor for for some reason you can't get a hold of me or some reason you don't like what I'm doing or whatever you can uh, contact my supervisor Josh Sayers I think most of you know him uh, if not uh, I can arrange for him to stop by the class and see you uh, we're still practicing social distancing although they are loosening up quite a bit uh, with that but still uh, we have to still follow the college policy for social distancing which is six feet apart and uh, not this all this about 15 minutes and wearing masks and all that so you all know what that is uh, you don't really need any uh, required material no textbooks everything's provided for you as far as that goes online uh, it says you might need a three ring binder I don't know if you want to keep the lab papers and stuff that I give you uh, the flash drive I've kind of worked out pretty good now the saving uh, deal and I'm going to try to go in there and clean off all the old uh, programs off of those uh, robots as much as I can uh, you uh, don't really need a calculator you probably got a calculator on your phone anyway and uh so uh, we're going to be, of course, safety is the uh, always paramount in every class that you take here on the industrial uh, side. And you always have to remember to keep safety foremost in your uh, mind as you work with robots, especially because robots don't care if you're in the way or not. And uh, they can move and hit you and hurt you and kill you and whatever. So, uh and let's go down here you know the grading scale and here's the weighted uh, grade percentage how much each category counts towards the overall grade uh, so labs as you see here labs and discussion carry the most weight and that's what we focus mostly on because that's what the course is about teaching you to use the robots actually use the robots so uh, and you know lab rules and procedures you can look through that so uh, where is I guess I passed over 
the course objectives here. Let's look back here. Uh, yeah. So here's what what we're going to learn in this uh, class: study of safety hazards and so on and so forth. This demonstrate the ability to write advanced teach pendant programs. Understand the integration process of robots into a multi-robot work cell using various types of computer-controlled equipment, PLC and HMI. And really, uh, we've got those interface boxes with the inputs and outputs on it. And that's about as much PLC stuff as we have, I do believe. Uh, learn to communicate effectively using industry vernacular. <laughs> Okay, so you got to know what all the acronyms mean and we, you know, all the terms for the robotics is basically what that's saying. Uh, solve technical problems, effectively troubleshoot uh, when you have a problem with your program. Discuss the various applications of the end of the uh, tools and apply basic knowledge to robot physics in an automated robotic work cell, so on and so forth. So that's basically what we're going to learn. Uh, safety devices, program control, condition monitoring, frame manipulation, system integration, troubleshooting, and so on and so forth. So you guys uh, already know most of this anyway. And because uh, everybody did real well in the uh, first class, I was pretty impressed with you all. Uh, we are going to be starting off here with the uh, data registers and doing some work with that and math instructions and things like that, which you've already had a little exposure to that uh, with creating the loop programs and so on and so forth. Okay, so I can't really stop to ask for questions here. So uh, if you have any questions, make sure you jot them down. And then when you come to lab day, uh, let me, you know, uh, you can ask the questions. So I'm going to go here to home. Yeah, there we go. So uh, speaking of lab day, we're going to keep the same format that we had with the Monday group and the Wednesday group because that opens, that gives us more robots to work with, give you more time on the robots. And that way uh, we don't have half the class sitting over at the computers and then the other half uh, working on the robot. And because uh, that makes, you know, the people that aren't working on the robot get they want to go over and work on the robots and then the people that are on the robots feel pressure to get done so they can leave to give uh, a robot to somebody else and it just just doesn't work good all around so we're going to keep the same uh same format with the monday night group and the wednesday night group if you have any problems with that or if your schedules change let me know and we'll see maybe some people need to swap around or whatever change from monday to wednesday and vice versa but uh, just let me know if there's any problems with that uh, setup, and we'll try to work out a solution for it. So as far as your online lessons, I want you to do uh, two of these modules a week. And then that's the way it's laid out because there are 16 modules altogether, eight, eight weeks. So two a week will get you through all the uh, study material. So uh, this week, we're going to start with the uh, register instructions and uh, work on conditional branching. And then next week, we'll do uh, wage instructions and payloads. And the following week, week three, we'll work on offsets and then review for the midterm. And it seems like it comes by awful quick, but... Uh, that's four weeks. And then also at the midterm exam, you'll be taking the SACA 216 test, C216. So you can go there to the SACA site and check on uh, C216 and see what all the objectives are for that. I believe uh, you can access that and see what you need to know. So basically, it's, uh, again, a generic test, not specifically for if uh, FANUC robots, but it it talks about uh, 
these things that we're going to be studying here about registers and conditional branching and some things that would be uh, common across any kind of robot platform that you would be working with as far as programming goes. So, it, so this test is more on the programming end of it than the first test was. The first test was, uh, what was it, robot operations or something like that, robot systems, I can't remember. Uh, but it was more about the physical makeup of the robots, and now this one is more about on the software side about programming. So we'll be taking that socket test at midterm time, and I'll be talking to you more about that as we get near that time, and also I'll have a practice test put up for you to help you get ready for that exam. So that takes us through midterm, and now we go to... Uh, the second half of the class, the second four weeks, and uh, this field trip thing, we will, I don't think it's still yet possible with all the uh, COVID rules, but I'll check and see if we can't set something up for that. Uh, if not, uh, we'll do something to fill, fill that uh, module right there which we have plenty to do. So now, uh, if you look here, you have one, two, three, four modules of RoboGuide. And uh, I don't know how much that we're going to do that with that. I may change this as we get there because uh, I want to give you as much time as possible on the actual robots. And I really haven't had time to look at this RoboGuide stuff yet. But uh, we will do a couple weeks of that. So let's say uh, on uh, week five that we will do a robo guide. And I'm still not sure about the field trip. So let's just say week five will work on robo guide. And uh, then the next week could possibly be more robo guide. <laughs> or not we'll we'll just see so just uh, we will do stuff with robo guide it's loaded on all the computers there and you can put it on your computer at home if you loaded it in the last nine weeks uh i'm not sure yet if uh because it it has a uh, time limit uh, you, you only, it's only a trial version, so you only have so many weeks that you can use it, I think a month or whatever. And uh, mine's already expired that I loaded here, but I'm going to try to uninstall it and reinstall it and see if it lets me go again for another month. So if you loaded it in the ne first nine weeks, which we really didn't have any choice uh, because we were locked out of the lab there for a couple of weeks and people were trying to get, uh, stay current with the material, so... Anyway, we'll see if RoboGuide works for us or not, and we'll work around that too. So RoboGuide, and then uh, the final thing that you're going to learn here is Robot Mastering and Program Adjust. And Robot Mastering would be, okay, if you had to uh, change a motor or change an encoder or whatever on the robot and actually change the physical uh, positioning system in the robot, then you're going to have to remaster it, and we're going to learn how to do that, which is probably pretty important to learn. Uh, and again, we're going to do the module reviews uh, and everything uh, for the final exam, and also will be your third uh, certification offering here. With and you'll actually do a FANUC uh, test. And it will be specifically on the FANUC robots. And I haven't taken that test yet. I will take it uh, prior to when you guys take it. So I'll be able to let you know what's on that test. But we actually have to take that over at the Learning Center. So we'll have to get all that scheduling set up uh, for you to go over there and take that exam. I don't, again, I, couldn't, I can't get any information uh, Josh has been trying to get me some information about that so I can give you a little more heads up on it but uh, and, and to help me <laughs> because I'm going into it blind too kind of uh, so we'll see anyway what what uh, that's all about and I'll be giving you more information but that's what seven eight weeks away before we uh, will have to do that so 
Okay, so that's our module overview. And uh, again, we will be this week, we will be working on the registers instructions. Okay, I need to uh, leave this student view here so I can show you. Uh, I've got a, uh, I'm going to have you do some register uh, labs, and you already know how to do the registers pretty much. And we can either make a position register or a uh, program register where we store values and use that to control a program. In other words, we want the program to repeat five times. So we, we put a number five in one of the registers, and then we use a math instruction that every time it loops through the program, it subtracts one from that five so that we can uh, you know, regulate how many times a program runs. And I've got some code that I'll give you as examples to help you with that. So that's what we'll be working on Monday. And so Monday and Wednesday this week, we'll be doing the uh, uh, register lab and also a conditional, if my, what is my, uh, yeah, I'm going to go back there, conditional branching. So conditional there's two kinds of branching. We have uh, conditional branching and unconditional branching. So unconditional branching would be like for your um, final exam where you called a program. You call We did the RAD, R-A-D, and you made a main program that called the R program, the A program, and the D program. There was no condition set on that. It just automatically, as a program scanned through, uh, it called each of those uh, in sequence. So now uh, if, if we make a conditional branching, we could say before you start going, before you went to R, you have to flip a switch on. Before you went to uh, A, flip a switch on. Before you went to D, that would be conditional branching. So we're going to work on that, and it's not real difficult and like I said, you've already had a really good exposure to that uh, doing the uh, lab. So I think we'll probably move pretty quickly through the lab on uh, Monday and Wednesday. And on Monday night, I have a uh, personal thing going on. And I am uh, have a visitor coming from out of town. So I'm going to need to leave around 6 uh, p.m. And so if uh, there's a problem with somebody that can't get to do the lab and get there ahead of time and enough time to do the lab uh, let me know and uh, we'll work something out because I'm going to have to leave probably no later than 6.15 or so uh, but, but we'll work that out and uh, that's just on Monday night Wednesday night I'll be good so uh I think the lab will probably take you about an hour to do, maybe less, because uh, you've already had a whole bunch of experience doing the registers and the conditional branching. So uh, we're good with that. So, again, you got any questions about any of this, make sure you study. Uh, uh, I don't know when they're going to activate this for you to see. Uh, it doesn't look like it's been uh, activated yet. I don't know. Uh, so you'll get to do uh, at least try to look at register instructions and module uh, conditional branching on module two for uh, this coming week. And you got any questions, you need anything, get a hold of me, uh, text or email, and I'll see you in class this week. Thanks for watching.